Hello and welcome to Breakfast All Day. I'm Matt, uh, Christy is here, uh, Alonzo is here, and we are coming to you live, well not really live, recorded from our homes uh, because we still want to do movie reviews. Uh, we were reviewing a lot of streaming titles. Uh, this one, uh, first one up this week, we are going to review Banana Split. Uh, Christy, will you tell us about it? I will because I had the pleasure of having the director, Ben Kosalki, on my a la carte, back when oh. a la carte was a thing that happened in mm -hmm. this world. Um, he is a longtime cinematographer making his feature directing debut. He is a lovely guy with really interesting, cool taste. And this is his first film. And he even described it as like his John Hughes movie. And is that Sabrina in the background I hear? That is Sabrina. <laughs> Hello, Sabrina. Yes. Um, so Hannah Marks and Liana Liberato are these two young women who become best friends during the summer after their senior year in high school. They're about to, you know, college is about to begin for many of them. And one of them is dating the other one's ex. Liana Liberato shows up out of nowhere as this new and exciting, sexy thing. And Hannah Marks's ex-boyfriend, Cole Sprouse, right? Name Cole that Sprouse, Sprouse. not Dylan. Dylan. Dylan's the one on... Uh on uh, Riverdale, I think. Name that Sprouse. Um, yeah. so, um, so they break up, he starts dating Liana Liberato, but Hannah, the, the two young women though realize, we really like each other. Like if we had just met, we would have become best friends. And so they end up that whole last summer hanging out together and becoming best friends. And they have these rules about how they're not gonna tell him and they're not gonna talk about him. And it's a really tricky line this movie walks. It's extremely raunchy in all the best ways. The dialogue feels really true. Hannah Marks co-wrote it. And, um, it and just, she's friends with her, her co-star in real life. They are yes. best friends in real life, yeah. yes. And that, that chemistry you can, it really shows. It feels alive and very authentic. And so it's how they hang out all summer long and how they try to navigate this, the, the trickiness of it. And it's about female friendship it's a, and the complexities of that and the intensity of that. It's about that flux, that state of insecurity that you're in as you're graduating from high school and you're really excited about jumping into the real world, but there's some uncertainty there for that as well. Um, it just felt really true and really honest and sweet. Like it's, it's raunchy, it has a raunchy, sweet balance just so beautifully. And I had a blast, I loved it. Yeah, it's, it's really charming, um, you know, I, I kind of almost wish, do you remember in Bridesmaids where they reduce the character of the groom to, to so little that it's, it's, it's uh, Tim Heidecker, but like he literally has, he has no dialogue, whatever, like he's just literally sort of standing there in a couple of scenes. I kind of almost wish they'd gone that far with the boyfriend because he winds up being kind of a nothing character and you, you know, I mean, he, he's basically there as a plot device, which I think is great because I think usually women get sucked being the plot device in movies like this where it's all about the men. But because he plays such a large role in these two women's lives, I, I found myself thinking a little less of them because they were so fixated on him and he was so whatever. You know, so I, I don't know. I, I almost kind of wish that, that they had just kind of gone further in erasing him from the narrative and really just making it about the idea of him as being an obstacle for the two of them. Because when the two of them are on the, on screen together is really, I think, when it pops the most. Although I did like Luke Spencer Roberts a lot as his sidekick. Mm -hmm. Well, he's sort of like a Ducky Dale figure, isn't he? I mean, if, if we're, we're going to extend the John Hughes metaphor here, yeah, he feels bit. like the wisecracking, like oddly dressed best friend who secretly right. has a crush. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this too. It's, it is... Dialogue's really sharp. I mean, it's it's granted, you know, you not, no eighteen year old really would talk like this, but um, <laughs> it's very fun. It's you know, it's kind of got that kind of snappy, rapid fire, um, screwball dialogue, um, which you know, it, it's a lot of fun. You're right. the The two leads have terrific chemistry together. I like that they made it clear real early on and and stuck with it, like these girls are not going to fall in love with each other. Like this is a friendship story. Um, and it's, you know, you get emotionally invested. Um, 
I, I found myself, you know, especially having just watched, which we'll talk about in a little bit, Big Time Adolescence. This movie is much, much better than that, than that one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I had a really good time in this um, and found it, uh, I hate to use this word because it's so cheesy, but it's delightful. And, it is. Um, it really is. It's really charming, yeah. Yeah, and, and just the way, you know, after I watched it, I told my wife, I was like, you know, you should have watched this with me because it's really sharp. And the way they make it work, you know, the, the way the ending comes together, um, and I, I just really enjoy it. Like, I, I kind of am blanking a little bit on, like, you know. Uh, I, think that, I think that that book smart has been really good and bad for movies like this, because on the uh-huh. one hand, it's an easy shorthand to explain what it is, but at the same time, like, book smart is so good that these other movies in its wake kind of don't quite live up to it. Like, I think, you know, Good Girls Get High is another one of these movies that played the festivals and had a lot of buzz behind it, but then it's like, yeah, ultimately it's it's good, and I want to see what else these actors and, and writers do. But you know, Booksmart really is taking it all to another but level. You know? I think this is a much different movie than Booksmart, right? Because Booksmart is about two longtime friends who are going through their last night, like they've got their their big plans for their last day, mm-hmm. big party, and how that you know what's coming up next in their relationship. Where this one is about a friendship that caught both of these two people off guard. Um, And the movie's really smart about, like, they get everything with Hannah Mark's relationship with Cole Sprouse done off the bat with this, like, two-minute montage, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they don't spend any time getting you invested in that relationship. Like, here's all the stuff they did, and, right? And it's, I thought that was really clever. And so you get to focus on this friendship and the ins and outs of it and, and what, how these two characters make each other better people. Um, and then we also have to talk about uh, April's family. Her, oh, her right, sister. her mom and her sister. Her mom and her sister. Oh, God. Her sister is terrible. Her sister She's is so a terrible, terrible, terrible person. Um, and her mom is like that kind of nightmarish, like, oh, God, Mom, you are sharing too much. Please stop. I know you're trying to be cool. And, you know, as a parent, I was like, I don't think I'd say that to Gabe or something like that, but I could see the desire to kind of just treat your teenager like a fellow adult. Um, let me tell you, that doesn't work. Cause <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was a lot of, that was, I would, I would totally watch more scenes with that family because it was hilarious. No, there's a lot that I like here. And, and, and yeah, I think obviously plot wise, it's different than books are, but I think tonally this notion of like these two very precocious young women, as you said, speaking in the way that no 18 year old probably really ever does. Um, you know, I think there's a, there's a, a sense of breeziness and of banter and stuff that those two movies really do share. And so it's hard not to compare them, you know, as well, unfair as that might be. I would argue that's also part of the John Hughes homage. Right, characters sure, yeah. who have the snappy retort at all times. It's it's like slightly heightened, but mm. not completely unrealistic. It's but still, still rooted in a recognizable yeah. place. So, I also, dug it. I have to go back and find my my Ben Kasulki interview and, and go repost that because uh, he was a delight to talk to. He's worked with the Duplass brothers a lot and Lynn Shelton and done a lot of indie stuff for a lot. Guy Madden. Yeah, so I'm really happy to see him. Uh, he also did an episode of Who Shot You? If y'all want to go dig that up, I think we we'll talked about. It. 1917, we had him on as a... To give his... I have not talked to him, so I have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's like uh, six foot six, and he has like crazy Tim Burton hair. Nice. Uh, one thing I do want to say, um, also, great soundtrack on this movie. Like a bunch oh, of like, yeah. you know, uh, girl punk songs. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really killer soundtrack. Yeah, cool. very good uh, uh, music supervision going on here. Awesome. Well, I, Ben loves music. It's very important to him. So um, I'm saying 8.8. 8. What are you guys saying? What did I say? Uh, I <laughs> Alonzo, I'll just tell you what you think. Um, Alonzo, you said 7.1, and Matt, okay. you said 8.5. Yeah, 8.5. Okay, our number is 8.1. It's good. It's, it's good. a lot of fun. Stream it. It's streamable through like iTunes and a bunch of places, I want to say. Yes. yes. iTunes, Amazon, wherever you rent stuff for streaming. It's there. 
Uh, thanks for watching. If you're uh, checking us out on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, wherever you are, you can follow us uh, on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BeFastAllDay. And, you know, mosey over to patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. Check out extra goodies that we have for our subscribers, including right now we're talking about the HBO series um, uh, Westworld and the plot against America and Netflix's Tiger King. We have thoughts. <laughs> Do that so again, anyway. Christy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so check that out. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.